My next project is to replace this crawl space door. We had siding put on and you can see that's the insert here. Um, but the bottom of it is all starting to rot out. So I've already pulled this piece off. If I move the J channel, you can see that this board is already compromised. So what I decided to do is, and this board was a little short. You know, this is uh, three and a half inches. It's kind of like a, a, a one by. Um, it's about one inch thick, so I'm going to go with uh, this plastic PVC lumber. This is also, it's a one by three and a half by eight, but it's really, you know, five quarter by four by eight. So they say it's four inches, but it's really three and a half. And that's what this was over here. This is three and a half inches wide all the way around. And I'm going to miter it um, so it looks a little nicer. And I'll and I decided to get a new piece of plywood too. Um, this probably isn't quite as thick. It's probably three quarter there originally. And this is I think 20, 23, 30 seconds or something like that. Um, but I'm gonna do a new piece that'll be the whole length the way it's supposed to and then I can frame this PVC lumber all the way around. And then I got a new piece of J channel down here. And then I'll redo the uh, the siding pieces inside as well. So that's the next project. I'll probably reuse the hinges. Probably get a new gate hardware here or latch, so it closes easier. And then I'm going to weather strip around it too, so it seals up a little nicer. So that's the first stage: is to cut a new piece. I've already got it marked the size I want. I have a, uh, it's called an AccuCut, it's a Craig um, device that you can put on there and get a nice accurate cut, so I'm going to use that to cut the base piece. It's not critical in this case. Again, I'll have a stop behind it and have some weather stripping, um, but it just helps you get a nice straight line anyway. Alright, I'm going to start my cut um, partially in the board because this, this piece here is going to be saved. I only want the piece on the right there. So I'm going to start this in the groove up here and then I'll hold the guide up, start it, and then come down into the cut. See it, it's held in place because I didn't cut the whole length of the board. You see I went a little bit past and that's okay because I wanted to make sure I get a nice clean cut here. So I've got that cut so I'll flip it around and do the other cut and then I'll have this kind of an L shape that's left. Now this time when I cut I'll be able to start all the way on the end here and you see this Craig device allows you to put your starting point right on the edge here before you start cutting. So now, and I have the sawhorse, I have a sawhorse right under here and under here and I put this just for extra weight because this is starting to get almost a little bit heavier than the piece I want to keep. This is the piece I want to keep so we'll let the piece we don't want fall off. But I've got it supported over on that end so it'll be held there and as I hold this here, you should be able to make sure that this piece doesn't really fall. I mean, you see I didn't go all the way through. Nothing fell, but that piece is loose now. So we get to save this for another project. And we've got our start of our door now. 
All right, now let's see how I did. I needed 36 by 29 and a half, and that is 36 on the money, and 29 and a half on the money. So now this is gonna be my door. Wouldn't be a very pretty door like that. So that's why we're gonna take and frame around here with the one by threes and cut on a 45 degree angle on each one. So I'll cut those pieces and have them fit here before I anchor them and show you what that looks like. And then I would be able to hang the door like that, but then I need to put the J channel inside and then also the pieces of siding in here. I think one of the trickier things to do when you're doing a project is figuring out how much material you have or how much material you need. Um, and so this again is a PVC board. It's eight feet long. Actually, when you measure it, it meant so that instead of eight feet times 12, it'd be 96 inches. When you measure this, they actually give you an inch for free, so it's 97 inches. But I said that this main door size was um, 29.5 times 36. So you have to measure, you know, so you need two 29.5s and two 36s um, to go around this perimeter, especially if you're going to miter them. You can save some if you're not going to miter it because you could have one piece go this way and then start the next piece and go that way. But I think the edge is nicer. And I was going to need to buy three pieces of this eight foot board anyway. Um, sometimes when you're trying to figure that out, you, you, you might want to get a 10 foot or a 12 foot board. And these come in 12 foot lengths, but it makes it a lot harder to get in one of those vehicles in a 12 foot length. So I have what I have. So what I did is I kind of mapped out, and this is the outside um, three-sided on the house, not the door part, but so it's 33 by 43 and an eighth. Um, so I, I wrote out here, you know, so board's 97 inches long, and I said, okay, I want to try to maximize the use of that. And I've got three boards, and is that enough? Could I do it with two? You know, what's the most efficient way to do it? So if you look, I can get two 29 and a halfs and a 36. So that's three sides of this board here, and that is 95 inches. And that gives you a two inches um, left. You remember your, your saw blade's going to take up a little bit, only a, a sixteenth or an eighth each cut. But that's about as close as you want to get. So the next two boards, I can do 143, which would be this top, you know, 43.125 is the same as an eighth. And then I can get one more of the 36s for this door, and then that would give me 79, and I got about 18 inches left. And then the last two pieces, I would just need these two sides then on the house, and that would be 66, and then you get 31 inches left of that board. So I'm still going to need three boards, no matter what way you look at it. Um, but I thought that was important to show you. Now, what you could do is you could say, all right, I got 31 inch left and 18 inch left. I could take a 33 instead of a 36 here and it would give me a 21 inch board left and take three off that would be 28 so you could have a 21 and a 28 it depends on what you want to do and what you have left over but you know you have maybe another small project that you need a small piece of the PVC lumber because it's expensive so just you know take your time and map out do different scenarios how much do these pieces add up to the total board length um, so you can maximize your use of that alright I wanted to show you my setup for us weekend warriors we don't have like a professional, you know, woodworker shop. You know, it's a garage, move stuff around. So I've got a card table with my saw in it, and I've got this other support here so that I can start cutting these boards. And uh, you'll see that I'll I'll put uh, the ang the saw the ang the angle of the saw rather. Um, we we'll have to open this up, and we want 45 degrees. We're going to go 45 degrees either one way or the other. Um, so this is a cheap Harbor Freight saw, so I might have to fight with it a little bit. But I can get 45 degrees that way, I can get 45 degrees this way, and I'm going to cut a couple of test pieces of wood first to make sure I'm actually getting 45 so I get a nice corner. Um, but then what I'll do is I'll measure and cut my 45s, pay attention to which angle you want where, um, so that you don't end up with um, joining a box the wrong way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started setting up and do my practice run, and then I'll cut the boards, I'll leave the, 
the camera on and we can kind of fast forward through the cuts. So now you can see that it, I'm definitely going to have to fight this Harbor Freight so it doesn't want to move easily. But, so I was, I was manhandling it, but I still got uh, two cuts and I got a nice 45 degree angle. It looks off here because that's routed, because it's just a scrap piece of wood. But that's a nice, nice square. You get a nice 90 left, um, no gaps or anything. So I'll be able to use this just fine. Also, don't forget your PPE. I have uh, some glasses. They even have readers in them so I can see what I'm doing. And then your ear protection. Um, all right, let's set it up and start cutting. Okay, I pivoted over to this view now because you can see I cut one board and I have three pieces out of it, just like I said on my, my sheet here. Board one, I did a 29 and a half piece, that'd be that far one. Did another 29 and a half piece, that'd be this one right here. And then I did a 36 inch piece. So they should fit together and they do, I just have to, you know, clamp them in place. Um, you can always fill in with a little bit of caulk, but I think that's going to work nice. I was off uh, maybe a uh, 16th of an inch or something, that's why you saw me shave a little bit extra off. And you can always do that again. If, when you start fastening these, you need to take a little bit off. But taking a little bit off is way better than trying to add some. But let's say that you, know, you had a gap here, then you could always you know, throw some caulk in there too. So that's three pieces of my frame. I just have one more bottom piece here. And you see, instead of, um, I probably could you know, do more math and figure out what angles I need where on the saw, but I don't have that many cuts, so I'm just gonna flip, fat, flip flop back and forth um, which way the 45 degree angle goes on the, that miter cut, but that's working out well. I have the uh, finished frame of the door now and I've got it clamped in place um, it's pretty close uh, I don't think my saw is the greatest you, know, you see a little bit of a gap here this one's nice and tight and you see I'm just using one clamp to hold both ends you know it's not a perfect corner there um, but to me this is acceptable I think the biggest one the biggest faux pas right here you know just kind of fill that in with a little caulk or again it's going to be on the bottom I don't know that you'll even see it that much so now I'm going to anchor this to the plywood so this is an inch the plywood's almost three quarters so you figure all right what kind of a screw do I need and I decided to go with these um, GRK fasteners it's just a multi-purpose screw and it's uh, one and a half inches so you figure that's going to go through it at least until you drive the head there. But I actually want to countersink the head a little bit. And then I'll fill it in with caulk so that you wouldn't even see it. You just see a white um, spot there. So first I'm going to test it out just to see how these fasteners work. So I'll show you that in a scrap piece here um, before I fasten it. And then I'll just go ahead and fasten it. Alright, so this is... Um, 
a T15, so it's a Torx uh, bit, T15 that goes in here. And these are supposed to be designed so that there's a little bit of a screw thread on there. Once you start it, so that worked out pretty well. And you can countersink it as much as you want, but you can see that I've got a nice little countersink there that I can use with caulk. And that's a three quarter inch board, which is about the same thickness of that. So I didn't want it poking through either. So I'm going to go ahead around the whole perimeter and uh, fasten all these boards. And then I'll go around the edges and maybe sand them just so that they're all uniformly the same. All right, there you have it. Well, I ran out of time for the day, but I wanted to make sure I closed up the crawl space. Um, my next step is going to be making sure that I can get the, uh, the hinges in place. I might end up gouging a little out so this sits in there a little flusher. It's not really that big of a deal because the door's not that big or that heavy. But I wanted to just kind of set it in place. I have it held with these two brackets on the corner. Um, pretty consistent from a standpoint of gaps. And I'm gonna replace these outside pieces too. But that's all I have time for today. I have to come back and revisit. But I think it's gonna work out well. Off camera, I sanded these edges because they weren't, the plywood would stick over a little bit or the, the trim board would stick over a little bit. So I sanded them all to be flush and I decided to put uh, um, a kilts uh, stain blocker to indoor outdoor primer. So I did both sides and all the edges. Biggest thing I would worry about with these edges, especially if it's down toward the ground contact. Um, I don't know that this was necessarily a treated lumber. I don't think it'll see a ton of moisture, but I went ahead and did that. So now I'm gonna lay this down and put the J channel and the uh, the siding um, in it. I have to dismantle this to do that as well. Hopefully the same pieces. I've got some extra if it doesn't fit. Um, but this is called Everlast Siding. I'll get into that a little more when I assemble that. Let me show you what the uh, the wood, this is the original wood, and you can see how it's certainly deteriorated at the bottom part here. So that's why I wanted to get a new piece. I uh, just wanted to explain a little bit about this Everlast slide, siding. Um, this is not a vinyl siding, but it's a composite. And the way that it works is that they sit on top of each other. There's a... Uh, a groove underneath so you put this one on loose like kind of like vinyl siding do you want to be able to have it slide to expand and contract a little bit it doesn't expand and contract as much as vinyl siding but it still does so you're supposed to put this one on loose the next one comes down over top and then you anchor that loose then when you get to the top piece they just had it under the J channel and then they put nails um, three spots here one two, three, which you're not supposed to do because now you've pinned it against the wall. Um, but what you're supposed to do, and, and I have over here, I have a whole wall, that's a topic for another story, um, but this is a two-piece. It's kind of like a J-channel, 
but that it has a receiving hole. Um, so this goes up underneath and then this will snap over top. So I have enough extra of this that I'm going to use this for the very top. So I should be able to more securely adhere this um, and then put the top piece over top of it. So we're going to do that on the new board. And you can also see this is the old J channel here, the dirty one, and a new J channel. And you see how they put these cuts in here. And so if you were to lay this straight, you basically are taking out a 90 degree angle so that then you can just keep using that to form your frame. So I'll, I'll typically plan on doing that too. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But that should give me a nice uh, 90 degree once you bend it to the dimensions I need with the new door. So that'll be the next step is to cut the J channel. Although I won't do a top piece because I'm gonna use this other stuff, but I'll have a U shape J channel and then an another different piece at the top and then see if these Everlast boards are gonna fit inside. I'll probably just take a quick measurement of this um, and including the J channel on the other side of this piece here. Um, make sure everything fits in there. So once I take these boards off, this is for the most part garbage. I'll cut off the bottom piece and save this top part for another project and then put the new board up there and start working on it. Before I measure my J channel, again I'm going to have three sides. Side, bottom, other side. And I talked about having a different top instead of a J channel. So this is the two piece I've cut this, this is 29 inches wide. And so this is the first part and you can see that it has this edge. So this will go in there, your side angle will go up and cover over top of this. And then you have this piece, so that's the complement. And then you have this top trim. So this will snap in place. So to make sure that, and I don't need to have the J channel go up inside there because I just need to have it meet. Maybe I'll try to go a little bit under there because you can see that this um, sticks out just a little bit past the uh, the trim board, whereas the J channel I don't believe will. Um, but so I'll basically just move this out of the way. I can put this upside down and then measure for my J channel. Just have the J channel come up a little bit past that and go take my measurements to do my J channel and then I can assemble the bottom piece and see how that's all going to fit into place. All right now I'm ready to cut my J channel. What I've done is this measurement here is 22 and a half. So I'm going to go 22 and leave just a half an inch gap there. I can always cut a little more. 22 and a half by 29 by 22 and a half. So I'm going to go 22 29 and back up to 22. So what I'm going to do is make a measurement, make it center line at 22, and then another one at 29, and another 29. And you can hopefully you can see that I've put the mark here, and I've also used my square so that you can see where I'm going to cut. But you actually want to leave this line a little bit so so it overlaps each other. You don't want it to just barely meet. You kind of want it to overlap um, so it has a better coverage. So I'm going to grab my snips here. First thing I'll do is cut the straight piece because it will be less difficult to manipulate this. And again, this shouldn't matter a whole lot because it's going to be underneath the piece of trim. So once you cut two sides, you should be able to bend it, and then you can get a nice cut. So this is a piece we don't need, and this is a piece we do need. So now we're going to come over here, and again, we're going to kind of loosely follow that line, but be on this side of it. And this, this piece is more critical, and you can always cut more off. So there. And there I cut out so you can see the part of the line is still there on both sides and you want to follow along that 
to the bottom, but don't cut too much into that because that's where you want to bend it. And once you get that, you can kind of bend this and fatigue it, twist it, and you should be good now. I should be able to bend that. I'm not going to do that yet. Then I want to cut this other one. Again, go into the middle and then come slightly less than the angle. Now we'll see how we did here. So we want to bend this and have that fit and overlap and bend this and overlap. And it's a little tight. So I think I don't have enough loop here. So I must have more than 29 degrees, or 29 inches between these two points, and you can see it is in a really sharp piece there. And it's close to 29, and right on 29. J channels collapsing on itself so exactly that it's not overlapping real great. But there, I got it in. You can rub off those pencil marks. Now I have the base for my pieces of everlast siding. So again, this is the top piece. And now you see that this actually won't fit. You can have this have a little bit, oh no, a little bit. Wasn't going all the way. So this will fit in there nice. I can reuse the same boards, and it has a little bit of movement, um, but it's not going to move so much that you're going to see it. So I can reuse these boards. So I'll anchor this down. Again, I'm going to have my top piece here. That will be underneath the J channel. That's a little bit tight, so I'll trim a little bit of this off. And then I'll put my three boards in, and then I'll use this to snap over top. So let me anchor this down. I've got to find the right screws. Again, we're only going through the plywood now, so I don't want to get ridiculous to go through this all the way to put the J-channel down. So I'll find some small screws to put that down and anchor that. I've secured the J-channel and this top trim all the way around. I wanted to show you, these are the screws I ended up using. 
this is kind of like a it's a particle board screw I believe it's only uh, 5 8 or 7 8 I can't remember but I love these things because it they're good for plywood um, it doesn't go all the way through even if it poked through it'd be this tiny little point that you could easily kind of just grind off um, so that's what I used for the uh, the fastening of the J channel. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I did on this. So now with this uh, this trim piece you can kind of see there's this this ridge here and I didn't put it smack up against the top because as you put this piece inside of here it's going to need to flex. So it'll need to flex both ways. So, and there's a, just a tiny bit of an overlap here. Even if you have a little bit of a gap here, I'll be able to put some caulk there. So that's why I didn't put this firm up against the top edge, is because I need to press this down. Once I have the pieces in, I'll press this down over top, and then it'll cover the, should cover the J channel again. If it doesn't, I'll pull it off and I'll cut more. Um, but I think we'll be all right. But I wanted to make sure I told you about this little gap that I left at the top all the way along here. Uh, just to make sure that this trim piece is going to fit in without a problem because that needs to expand till it snaps in place. Alright, I'm going to use the, at least the first same two pieces. You can see how dirty they were, but they clean up really nice. Um, it's just a paper towel. Um, I'll wipe these all down. and So there's nothing wrong with these pieces. I can still reuse them. And again, they're the right size because it won't fit in here it sits on top of both the top and the, or the left and the right side. So you can put it in, slide it in a little bit, come back the other way a little bit after you get it under there, and then slide it down over the top. And again, this is supposed to be anchored down. I'm not even worried about anchoring it down because it's not going to go anywhere. We're just going to come, and this was the next piece, you can see a hole from the third piece that covered it because they put a hole through it. And I'm not going to do that this time. I am going to have to cut a new piece. Um, but we have now this piece that goes over top. So now I'll measure and cut the last one and have it fit up against here tight and then I can anchor it up top here and then snap the piece over top. So we've got a couple pieces in the crawl space, I'm going to go get one, cut it to size and put it in. I went out to the crawl space, pulled this piece, again using my work uh, support there and I cut a 90 degree, again this doesn't have to be critical because of the fact that both edges are going to be hidden, but you still want a, a 90 degree, you know, start your next one with a 90 degree cut if you have a need for this piece. Um, then the other thing I had to do, this was the old piece you can see on the floor. Um, this doesn't have the top lip, so this top lip made it a little bit too wide. Um, so I needed to, you know, at least rip some of that off. So I ended up just with my circular saw, I took the top piece off and you can see the results over here. Uh, it wasn't a pretty cut, but again, they're just going to be covered. So I didn't really have a, a surface to screw. I was going to use this, but this just blew off. Um, so what I did is I drilled a little bit bigger hole. Hopefully you can see this. And then I put a screw in there, but it's got wiggle room. You know, so this can still move around a little bit, but it's not going to come off. And uh, it's not going to go left or right too much. So we're pretty much done now. So all I have to do is snap this piece on up top here 
I'll go ahead and mount the camera again so I can snap that in. And then the door will be done. Then we just have to fill in with caulk. We can paint if we want. I'll see how that looks. And then we got to worry about hinges. I might not get to the hinges today because I don't really like... This is kind of a, a standard door hinge. You know, a gate hinge is better because if you put this flat, you'll see there's a little bit of a, a gap underneath the both sides. So if you were going to put it over here, um, that sometimes causes a problem and you need too much of a gap in between, or you're having to gouge out the material. So I haven't decided. I think I'll just put the door panel in place and kind of keep it there. I also bought some uh, some one by of this PVC lumber. So I'm gonna use this as a stop all the way around the door. Um, and I'm just not gonna have enough time. And uh, So I'll, I'll come at this another day. But at least I've got this done. I'll put some caulk on here and then uh, We'll worry about how we're going to mount it and do the hinges um, on the next installment. But I'm pretty pleased with how this happened. And a little gap like this, you can throw some coke in there and you won't really notice that at all. Same thing, I can even squeeze some in these, these lines here. So we'll see how this snaps in place and then we'll kind of wrap it up for the day. Alright, so we're going to come at it and I want to get a hinge in the way. I want to be right on top of it. I feel like we're not going to be able to um, slide it a lot once we get it in place. I'm just going to start at one end, kind of apply pressure all the way. I heard it snap there. Mm. I could use my rubber mallet. And there we go, that snapped in place. And it's, it's resting on the J channel, which I could cut that out. Um, but I'm not overly worried about it. I think that'll actually help, because this is the top. So the rain, any rainwater, I'm going to put a bead of coke here, any rainwater then will drip and maybe bypass this, the end, the bottom, and uh, be kind of more of like a little rain shield. So I'm going to leave it like that because it snapped in place. Like if it wouldn't have snapped in place, then I would have been more worried. But I'm just going to leave it and throw some coke on some things now. For my call choice, I'm just going to use a basic, this is, I have another thing on my YouTube channel, that how to save caulk, let's see if it worked. Um, basically just saran wrap and a rubber band, or in Pittsburgh we say gum band, not in Pittsburgh anymore, but I still talk like it sometimes. And uh, this is just a basic, all-purpose acrylic latex, it's got a 40 year, and it's a uh, interior and exterior it says it down the bottom this last bullet here um, so you can see I've got quite a bit used out of there but every time I'm done with that I put it in that little thing and then uh, put a rubber band around it Let's see if I can get this this is uh, one of the nicer caulk guns I bought I can't remember how much I paid for it but I've had it for a number of years I wish I would have invested in one a little sooner and it has this release in the back here so once you're done coking you can push that and it works really well so let's see if we can get some to come out here yep and I already see it moving so now I'm just going to apply a little dot of this on each one of these screw holes to kind of cover them up
So now the door is finished. Here's a shot of what it looks like. You can see the rest of the Everlast siding and you see that it's just J-channel up at the top. And most of the time that was all right, but the other side um, where it gets direct sun, it wasn't all right. But anyway, so here it's just held in place. I'm gonna replace the, the three pieces around the door as well. Get some hinges and a different latch. But that looks pretty sharp. I like the way that turned out. And the top piece doesn't bother me that it's a little different. You could have got that stuff to go all the way around it, but I think that's overkill. You really just need to hide that top piece. So that's it for now until I have more time to work on it. It's been a minute since I uh, got back to this project here, but uh, I decided it's time to tackle the rest of this crawl space store. And the first thing I was going to do is I noticed some rot down the bottom. And I was going to just replace these trim boards here. And uh, we had a little bit of work when we first moved into the house. And it turns out this already is PVC board. So even though it's just colored down the bottom, um, that'll, that'll clean up. What I did do was I took this 2x6 that was rotted um, down the bottom here. And I spun this so that it's up on the top and on the inside now. I didn't have another piece of new and there was really nothing wrong with this. So I just used a couple of Tapcon screws, um, some white ones like this. These are inch and three quarter. And of course that's an inch and a half. So I pre-drilled the holes a little bigger, but that's on there firm now. So I'm just gonna remount this trim board back on here, make sure it's square, and then try to position the door in place with some hinges. And I bought some hinges that is kind of like a screen door hinge. It's a This one is an adjustable, see there's a spring inside. So I thought it'd be nice if you go in the crawl space, have the door closed behind you, but not latch, of course. So this is an adjustable one, but it, it came in a pack of three. And I think the other two um, will be fine for this. I just brought this one out to market for my template once I get the door in place. And I'll use something like a painter stick, which is about an eighth of an inch or so, just to make sure we have a, a, enough of a gap underneath the door so that when it swings, it'll actually close. But the more important thing is to make sure that this is kind of plumb. Um, so I'll start down the bottom. I think I really need to kind of push this out a little bit up at the top, create a gap there for it to be um, plumb and then I can fill that in with coke. So I've got some finishing nails that I'm gonna to use to uh, anchor this trim board back into this treated lumber. And then you can see the old coke line. I'll come back after I'm all done and coke that as well to seal it so critters can't get in. Now I have installed the hinges. You can see these are the ones that don't have an adjustment at the top. One thing to note is that if you look at this hinge I was using to mark, um, these go in and these go out. So the adjustable one that you could put here if you wanted in the middle, make it a little tighter to close faster. Um, the whole patterns weren't exactly the same. So make sure you're putting your uh, hinge bracket there that you're actually gonna use and mark it. Um, the gap on the left side, a little bit bigger on the bottom the top and the only thing I'm worried about is this little spot up here I could try to lower a little bit but it's just hitting just a touch right there in the corner uh, I think I'm just gonna take a chisel and scrape that off but as far as this opening now I've also got to put you see there's a stop here I'm gonna put a stop all the way around um, but a smaller piece and then I'll put some weather stripping on it. But if I let go of the door, let's say you just went in there, self close is working pretty good. And I don't really need it to slam closed or anything. So this will be a good solution. I have a latch to put on the left side. Then I need to clean things up and paint this older PVC board, some new caulk. And then 
after I put the stops, I'll be good to go. I'm pretty happy with the way this door is turning out. However, let me mention a couple things. Um, I like I like the hinges. Um, there's enough force. One of the things I noticed is I have this come all the way and it kind of bottoms out right there, which isn't bad because it'll kind of hold it in place. Um, but I either have to sink these down a little more so it goes the whole way and maybe have another brick there to hold it in its place or just be conscious of that. Um, it's kind of a nice slow close. Close is nice. So what I did on the inside is I used the same PVC lumber, um, a little smaller piece, you see a little gap here. Um, but basically this is just a stop all the way around. Another frame within a frame. So if you go on the inside, you can close the door. Actually, I'll do that in a second um, to show you how it's gonna hit. Because I kinda like how it, it closes, that it's nice and flush with this. Um, and then I'm gonna install this latch here that will swing over and mount this here and then that'll catch it's kind of like a little knife that swings over and then when I'm in there it would be hanging down like this so it couldn't you know latch on itself um, and, and get me stuck in there um, but one of the things I wanted to point out is you know the, the sides and the top of this frame are going into wood so that was easy I just used these smaller finishing nails um, just to hold it in place again it's not it's just stopping the door from going more inside you don't need a lot of strength there but this bottom part you can see that this is the brick right here and just a real thin coat of cement that they put on it now I'll seal this but you could tell that this is kind of brittle so I tried to use kind of like new style you take a a mortar bit you see it has a a little bit different shape to it um, use a mortar bit and drill into the concrete a little bit thinner than one of these it's called a tap con screw and I got some white ones so they would match and so I tried to drive it in here but it didn't grab because this is just loose um, cement so I kind of went old school and I had two options here this is called a hard cut nail and I used to use these a long time ago, go through two by fours and anchor it into block. And this is another style that's, you know, more for masonry. So you can see right beside it here, there's this square one, because these have a square head. So I just pounded this in. Again, I just, it was moving. I didn't want to, you know, and this is on the bottom. I don't want your knee hitting it as you're going in and just pulling it off. So I just put one in there. And I've also got, on an angle, finishing nails going through the bottom piece. So that should hold it in place with these three anchors. And, and this is kind of like a pin. It's not going to really pull it down, but it'll kind of help hold it in place. And then, um, after I show you the inside, I'm going to come back out and put some of this weather stripping. So I'll, I'll cut this. I'll just use one of these and go all along this trim, all along, and show you what that looks like. And then when I push, I'll have to kind of push this close a little bit, and when I throw that little knife switch, that'll keep some pressure on it to keep it sealed nice. Okay, now we're inside the crawl space. If you want to see my crawl space. It's not very fun. I don't like crawling around in here. Um, but you can see that this is sealed nice along the bottom edge, all around the top. You see that little bit of gap? Won't matter because we'll have some weather stripping up there. But what I want you to notice, push this open a little bit, you see as the door closes, the gap pretty much closes. And you want just a consistent, and here I'm gonna have weather stripping all around. You see a little bit of a gap, but that's not as nearly as much as the weather stripping. So that weather stripping will compress and you get a nice seal around here so that you don't have air infiltration. And we were having a problem with dampness which is why I did this whole project. So now time for the weather stripping. All right, I wanted to show you the tail end of this weather stripping. So again, there was a double layer and you pull them apart and you get a single. And then once you 
um, get it cut to the right length you just kind of double sticky tape and you tape the one side and then you peel this off Just stick it down. And I just want that kind of in the middle of that trim board. And you can push it down. And you can see that this crossed over that little gap there. So that'll help seal that. And give a nice seal against the door. So now I just have to do that I might not have quite enough might have to get some more um, it's gonna be close but I'll do as much as I can and then I can always fill in later but projects almost done I decided that I couldn't end on a dirty crawl space door so I came out this morning and I just took a, an alcohol wipe to that older PVC panel so you can see it cleaned up really nice even on the edges it came out fine so all that discoloration is gone so one last note is that I'm just gonna get some a little bit of caulk fill in those extra holes from before um, and then I'll uh, either call it a day or paint the whole thing to get a, a, a smoother finish but so all said and done this is right at $150. Um, I'm going to post on the screen, you know, what the costs were for all the different pieces. And, uh, and then I hope you have a project in mind that you can try and start to do. Because it's rewarding when uh, you're able to do something yourself, save some money, and learn something at the same time. You might even be able to buy yourself a new tool to do it.